Hi, this video will demonstrate how to use CADWIND version 10's new iWIND feature. iWIND is a whole new way to do filament winding simulations and the most advanced winding simulation tool available anywhere. Experienced users will find it more powerful and faster than the old non-geodesic winding feature and will notice that it finds many more winding patterns, even on complex mandrel shapes, in much less time. New users will find iWind intuitive and easy to use. When you make changes to a winding parameters in live mode, the results are instantly visible. So if you are a beginner, you can quickly learn the meaning of each parameter and how changing it will affect your winding by experimentation. Just drag a slider using your left mouse button to see what happens, or type in the value you want to try. If you don't want instant results, uncheck the Live button. You can then get results whenever you want by clicking Calculate instead. The bottom part of the iWind window gives the results table. Each row shows a different winding pattern. The number of cycles, the degree of coverage, the pattern number and skip index are given for each pattern. These parameters have the same meaning as they did for the old non-geodesic and helical winding features in previous CADWIND versions, so experienced users should find it easy to understand. The number of patterns that iWind finds can be controlled by using the Pattern Search Strength slider here. Basic searches are much faster, but find fewer patterns. If you move the slider all the way to the right, iWind will find as many patterns which match the search criteria as it can, but this can take some time for the calculations. You can see that the number of patterns increased from 74 to 266. I'll quickly explain the pattern results for new users. The degree of coverage is an important parameter as it tells us how much of the mandrel surface is covered at the starting frame. Less than 100% means that there are gaps between the bands, like this. And more than 100% means there are overlaps, like this. Minimum and maximum limits can be set here for the coverage of the patterns displayed or the limits can be applied to the number of cycles instead, which is a different way of doing the same thing. The number of cycles is directly related to the degree of coverage. One cycle happens when the machine head carries the fibre along the length of the mandrel to the far end, or back turning zone, and back to the near end, or front turning zone, and returns to the position where it started. The more cycles there are, the more fibre is wrapped around the mandrel and the higher the degree of coverage. The pattern number and skip index have to do with how the bands weave over and under each other and how the resulting pattern looks. Of course you can see how the pattern looks, so iWind makes this choice easy. Here you can see the difference between a 2 pattern and a 15 pattern. Like non-geodesic winding, iWind does friction calculations to make sure the fibres will not slip when you make your winding for real. However, the handling of the friction factor has been greatly improved since the old non-geodesic winding feature. The friction factor entered up here is treated as a maximum limit. When iWind does its calculations, it searches for patterns through the whole range of friction factors up to and including this limit. The results shown in this column are the friction factor for each particular pattern expressed as a percentage of the friction limit entered by the user. In this way, iWind is able to quickly and easily find the whole range of patterns with acceptable friction factors below the physical limit where slipping occurs. With non-geodesic winding in the past, this would have required a manual trial and error search, which would have taken much, much longer. I'll talk more about the meaning of the friction factor later. The winding length tells us the size of the turnaround lengths used front and back measured along the y-axis, and also the total winding length from end to end. 
This is great design information for winding of tubes or pipes. The path length is the length of fibre used for a single cycle or for the whole layer. A cycle means one trip around the mandrel from the start frame back to the start frame In this example, 2.38 metres of fibre will be needed for one cycle, and 147.8 metres needed in total for all the cycles. The number of cycles is given over here, on the left. The weight is the weight of the layer, which is great information to have for calculating your laminate weight, or even if you just want to work out the material quantity and cost. Lastly, the thickness of the layer at its thinnest and thickest points are given here, but only when you click on the pattern row. This data requires some calculation time so it's not filled in automatically. As iWind has the ability to find a large number of results, it includes several features designed to make it easy to find the patterns you want. For example, you can sort the patterns by clicking any of the result parameters in the header lowest to highest friction factor, or highest to lowest by clicking again. This works for all the result parameters, so you can sort by coverage, layer weight, pattern number, or whatever you like. You can also filter for particular results, or filter out unwanted results by clicking the small filter icon on any of the headers. Say you're only interested in these results, with 70% of the friction limit or more. We can easily remove the other patterns from the table. This takes the list size down from 118 to a more manageable 22 patterns. If you change your mind, simply turn the filter off down here, or turn it back on again, or customize and save it by clicking this button. This opens the Filter Builder, which is an advanced tool for filtering results. Here you can add more filters, more advanced filters like specifying that you only want to see the patterns with greater than 100% coverage and greater than 70% friction factor. Another way to find the patterns you like quickly is to group them by their results. For example, you could group them by the percent coverage. Just drag the parameter header to the grey rectangle using the left mouse button and drop it here. Then, you only see the patterns with a particular coverage, like 110% or 105% or 86%. If you like, you can further subgroup the patterns using the other parameters, like the percentage of the friction limit. This puts subgroups within the main groups and quickly narrows down the large list of original results into a very short list, which only has the results which best match your criteria. To remove groupings, simply drag the grouping from the grey rectangle. I'll go over the winding parameters and briefly explain their meanings. The mandrel is divided into frames, represented by these white circles in CAD wind. Each frame is given a number, starting at frame 1, which is normally at the driven end of the mandrel. iWind uses the frame numbers to locate important points on the mandrel. For example, the start frame is the number of the frame where the winding starts. In this example, it's frame 51 we can see the winding simulation starting at 51. We can change this by using the slider, or typing a new number into this field. Similarly, the turning zones are located at particular frame numbers on the mandrel. 
These are the zones where the fiber begins to turn around to make its return and can be controlled in the same way as the start frame. Start position defines the start point location circumferentially around the mandrel at the start frame. For the first time ever, iWind allows you to change the winding direction from forwards to backwards as well. The winding angle is the angle of the fiber direction with respect to the y-axis at the starting point. It's very important as it affects the strength of the part as well as the turning zone lengths and dome coverage on a pressure vessel. The winding angle can be held constant or varied according to frame number by clicking here and changing the values in this table. The friction factor is the coefficient of friction that exists between fiber and mandrel. You can control this parameter to make the fibers turn around more quickly or more slowly. Lower values lead to longer turning zones and winding length, or a smaller pole opening on a vessel. Larger values lead to smaller turning zones and bigger polar openings. But be careful not to make it too high or in a real winding your fibers will slip. If you enter zero friction, CADWIND will wrap the fibers around the mandrel along a specific path called the geodesic path. The geodesic path is the shortest distance between any two points on the mandrel's surface. Following the geodesic path means that there is no chance that the fiber will slip as long as all of the CADWIND parameters are accurate and your machine motion is accurate as well. The higher you make the friction factor, the further the fibers will deviate from the geodesic path. This gives you the benefit of being able to curve the fibers more quickly for shorter turnarounds and lower winding angles in some cases. However, the higher the friction factor, the greater the chance of slipping in your real winding. So, using some friction is usually good, but too much can be disastrous. Check the CADWIND user's manual for more information on this subject and a table of recommended maximum values. iWind allows you to change the bandwidth directly here. Note that the other material parameters are taken from the Material Parameter tab here. Lastly, iWind gives the option to calculate only one cycle of the layer. Or the entire layer pattern. If you choose Calculate First Cycle Only, then there will be no pattern, and so no pattern results in the table. iWind uses its own material parameters located in this tab. These parameters are only used to calculate the layer thickness and weight. They do not affect the part program directly. I do recommend entering them before you start using iWind, however, if you expect to use the layer thickness, layer weight, or mandrel update features. Briefly, the text value is the weight in grams of 1000 meters of a single tow or roving. 
your fiber supplier should be able to tell you this number. If you prefer English units, this will be given in yards per pound of tow or roving. The bandwidth here is the width of a single roving or tow when wound over your mandrel. This number is not used for calculating the overall bandwidth as you enter that directly in the I wind tab. It is used to calculate the thickness of the layer, however, so you should make sure it is consistent with the bandwidth parameter in the I wind window. For example, if you have three rovings and each one is 4 mm wide, you should enter 4 mm here and 12 mm, that is 3 times 4, in the I wind window. The fiber density is the density of the fiber material only. For glass fiber, this is typically around 2.6 grams per cubic centimeter. For standard modulus carbon fiber, it's usually around 1.8. The fiber volume fraction or fiber mass fraction is the percentage of the finished composite, which is fiber. The rest is assumed to be resin. You can enter this number either by volume or by mass, which are different ways of giving the same information. If you're wet winding, you can measure the mass fraction by accurately weighing 10 meters of wet fiber and dividing that by the weight of 10 meters of dry fiber. If you use prepreg, your supplier should be able to tell you the volume fraction. The matrix density is the density of the resin or matrix material by itself. This information should be supplied by the technical data sheet for your resin. Typical values are 1.1 or 1.2 grams per cubic centimeter for most resin systems. CAD1 calculates the resulting ply thickness here based on the parameters you entered. Note that this thickness calculation does not take into account the degree of coverage and it is for one ply only, where most winding layers except hoop windings will cover the mandrel twice. So the thickness given here is the ply thickness times the degree of coverage times two. As you can see, iWind is a very sophisticated tool designed to make it quick and easy to find a lot of possible winding patterns for any mandrel shape, and then quickly identify the best winding patterns for your requirements, and show them with beautiful graphical representations. Using iWind is fast, easy, and intuitive, and I think you're going to enjoy working with it.